Good Morning Liberty. Well, what is up, all of our Liberty-loving friends? This is another fantastic episode of Good Morning Liberty. My name is Nate Thurston. Across from me is Mr. Charles Chuck Thompson. How's it going today, Chuck? You know, I got some things off my chest. Yeah. Yeah, we've been talking um, to the live group now for about 25 minutes. Besides the fact that my name is Amanda, mm-hmm. and I run we know the that. show. Yeah. Yeah. I got some it's, good compliments on the uh, Amanda episode. Uh, this, yesterday, by the way. Well, of course you would. This is my show. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I am Amanda, Amanda, Amanda for the people. <sighs> I've been told that if you ever have to step away, that we're going to be just fine. You know, it's going to be just fine. And I've had to step away many times. <laughs> you have. You have. <laughs> hey, this is Good Morning Liberty. We talk about life, liberty, and the pursuit of meaning every single day of the week when we want to, if you are so inclined. And where in the world is Charlie San Diego? Yes. Yeah, so we found you. You're here today. You've been here for most of the week. Most of the episodes this week, we both took the day off from the podcast yesterday, but we've got so many freaking interviews to release right now that you're never going to have a day without content. Not for the next month anyway, I can guarantee you that. Anyhow, if you want to hit follow, subscribe, like, share, retweet, comment, all that kind of stuff, go do that. That's the best thing you can do to help this show continue to grow. What are you laughing about right now? The live group. Oh, okay. Uh, someone said that my voice sounds deeper than it did at Freedom Fest, and I just responded and said, we have COVID. <laughs> yes. Just letting them know. That's what it is. Pretty soon, I'll sound like RFK the next couple days. There you go. Don't worry. You had a good RFK impersonation, for sure. <laughs> okay, uh, today's Dumb Bleep of the Week, by the way. That's the day of the week where we talk about all the dumb things that have happened over the last week. This is a very special episode uh, because it is the Dumb Bleep of the Week for the week that someone tried to assassinate Donald Trump. And so you could probably guess there's going to be an awful lot of dumb bleeps that have to do with that. Yeah. In fact, there are 11 dumb bleeps, and I believe 10 of them have to do something with that. Maybe nine. Maybe it's nine. If you submitted something that didn't have to do with the RNC convention or the attempted assassination of Trump, I'm sorry. We're going to have to push you off for another week. This is a monumental week in the history of the United States of America. So we're going to have to talk about some of these things. By the way, I know this isn't dumb. So before we get into the dumb, did you see that I sent you the video of Mark Zuckerberg? I saw that. I'm sure most people have seen it by now. Mm -hmm. But I Mm -hmm. think that is probably the sentiment among 90 to 95% of America. That's possible. So, I mean, if Mark Zuckerberg is saying it, Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, but he's a robot anyway, (laughs) you know. So, uh, yeah, basically, if you haven't seen the Mark Zuckerberg video, he said that uh, he, what did he say? He said that, that was like one of the most badass things he's ever seen when basically Trump came said, out and put his fist up in the air. Trump putting his fist in the air with the American flag behind him and blood on his face is one of the most badass things he's ever seen. Yeah. yeah. That's, so it's basically, basically true. And then, he's, and then he said he felt like he feels a sense of um, he said that pride it felt, it or felt a spirit, a spirit, you know, got yeah. that American spirit. Mm hmm. So don't fly spirit, by the way, if you're taking bags or if you want something to drink, anything like that, it's not cheaper. I took it out there to Vegas. Um, if you're going to spend more money, like a normal flight, you know, uh, it's not, not a good deal. Four hours. That's why the government should force them to have upfront (laughs) pricing. That's my opinion on the matter. No, sorry. That's probably JD Vance's opinion. Uh, we (laughs) We might talk about that here in a little bit. Okay, so we got Dumb Bleep of the Week. We got 11 things we got to talk about. It's currently 12.30 p.m., and so we're going to have to get into some of these uh, dumbs. The first thing I have on here for, oh, by the way, side note, Amanda, I know you're in the group right now. If you could, in the Dumb Bleep of the Week voting channel, put in the resolution for our debate that we had, and then a affirmative negative uh, so people can vote. So the people that are hanging out in the live group right now, the Fed Haters Club, join gmail.com. Uh, In order to see who won this debate that Amanda and I did, I want to get a vote right now before you've heard it, okay? (laughs) So I want as many people that are in the Fed Haters Club to go and vote. I'm going to leave that voting open over the weekend to try and get as many people that are in the group to go vote on it, and then I'll release the debate sometime early uh, next week, and we'll do another vote uh, after people have had enough time to listen to that. That's the best way I can come up with. I don't even know what you guys were debating about. We debated the um, vaccine mandates... uh, corporations enforcing their own, you know, Mm. private vaccine. Oh, how easy is that? So, 
It was a. I think we did good. It was fun. What we had, an, we had what a good an time. Easy debate. We both called each other fascists. You know, so it was a good time. <laughs> How can you have a debate without calling your opponent a fascist? I'm so assuming we, uh, we she argued. That. She argued that uh, they can't. Yes. And you argued that they can. That they can. Yeah. yeah so you That's, were in the affirmative. I was the affirmative, which okay. I found is not the position you want to take in a debate. <laughs> Uh, you're you're at a slight disadvantage when mm-hmm. you're arguing arguing in favor of something. So That's, I argued in the firm, in the mm-hmm. affirmative. Yeah. She told me that was the whole strategy. It's the, the hardest position to take in, a, in that debate. So. Well, it just shows who's got the real guts. <laughs> yeah. You know, if somebody's willing to take on the actual challenge mm-hmm. of debates. So I'm making it's, the resolution <laughs> next time. I'm going to make it. Okay. Uh, dumb bleep number one. Of course, this is the week where someone tried to assassinate Donald Trump, so it's going to be a lot of stuff having to do with that. I sent these to myself uh, on Saturday and Sunday because I thought they were so ridiculous. And what I was thinking was, when I heard that Trump had been shot, I immediately wanted to see if that was true. And so what did I do to see if it was true? I went on CNN. No. <laughs> You went to Twitter. I just opened Twitter and I searched <laughs> Donald Trump shot and then I waited for the hive mind to tell me what had happened on Twitter. That is the place you go to get breaking news. I think a lot of people feel that way these days. Um, I actually turned on the news. The news. But I someone called me and said, okay. hey, turn on the news. The news. Okay. Luckily, and they had 24-hour news. I think it was Fox mm-hmm. that I turned on and... Um, they were talking, they were, had already confirmed he was shot. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Not, I didn't see this until later. Actually. Oh, there were some, so some of the headlines immediately afterwards. And I just got to tell you, it seems fairly obvious to me from watching the video that someone shot at Trump and that he got up and there was blood on his face and he was rushed away by Secret Service. Uh, and there were several gunshots that rang out. Uh, at the event, that even within the first five minutes or so, you would be able to speculate that someone had fired shots at the Trump rally. I don't know, when he stood up and there was blood streaming down his face and they carried him off. You could even speculate that he had at least been grazed by a bullet. Maybe you don't have to do that, though. You could at least say it was gunshots. I don't know. That someone... That there were shots fired. Could have been a could have been a firecracker. Somebody threw it his ear, though. Yeah. yeah. So here's one example of a great headline: like Donald Trump whisked off stage with bloody ear after loud noises <laughs> rang through the crowd at rally. Well, yeah, they they got this quote straight from Anchorman. What <laughs> what were those noises? There is just no way to know yeah oh yeah great uh great point magoo you heard the secret service agent say shooter is down when, up when they were up there by the podium with trump <laughs> yeah but the mainstream media they just you know they're very hesitant to go with a story <laughs> until they can confirm until it's been confirmed they don't ever want to put any misinformation out no, there. no of course well, not like uh these people like usa today trump removed from stage by secret service after loud noises startled the former president Startled him to the ground. And the crowd. Yeah. He, in fact, he was so startled by the loud noise, his <laughs> ear begun to bleed. Yeah, that's how loud it was. That's a, <laughs> it's a really loud noise. Yeah. You know? Um, how about something else? You open up CNN's page, and of course, right here at the top story, there's dozens killed as Israel targets Hamas. You notice that the Israel Hamas thing doesn't seem to be going on anymore. I haven't heard anything about that in a long time. <laughs> mm. So it was Israel who did this. There you go. Mm. It was the Jews. <laughs> who did this over here in the top right you see uh secret service rushes trump off stage after he falls at rally yeah that's the that's the story right there uh, he falls at the rally and secret service has to rush him off the stage i really i strongly feel like in the amount of time it took you to write this little story and set up your live update page and all that you could probably gather enough information that there were shots fired and that he had been grazed by a bullet and that this was clearly an assassination attempt and that they rushed him off. Mm. Okay. It's just a little weird. I just don't want to jump to any conclusions. I guess not. Uh. Yeah. They're, you know, they want to make sure that they don't spread any disinformation. Um, so that's, Oh, they were waiting from the ministry of truth to Mm. approve. Yeah. But 
Okay. Since their funding got cut or something like because that, of probably democracy. by Republicans. Yeah. Because of democracy. It would be dangerous for democracy if you didn't uh, if you didn't wait to confirm that. So, of course, he was just rushed off after he fell. You know, it could be like, and the, that day Trump fell, you know, like that kind of fell, mm. you know, like the Roman Empire fell. Yeah. That kind of thing. Maybe that's what they meant by like the word shakes, fall. Like Shakespeare. Yeah. Level of fell. That kind of fell. I think that's he, probably what they like meant. He he was befelled. <laughs> <laughs> Befelled. Yes. That's what it is. Uh, I'm separating out some of this because there's so much stuff here. This is uh, after we know what happened. We know that the, it was an assassination attempt, and we have a couple clips here. Was that George Stephanopoulos? That's him. That's his name. Mm. So we have one from MSNBC, and we have one from ABC. And my computer's being weird today. Not let me swipe back and forth here. It's probably that whole crowd strike thing. Oh, by the way, we forgot to mention, we have no idea what Joe Biden's going to do in this race. Mm -mm. Neither does he. Yeah. Uh, but over the last, like yesterday, I was 100% sure he was gone. Today, they're coming back out. And I'm seeing stories. Joe Biden says he's staying in the race. He's not going anywhere. Not leaving. Th does that say Joe Biden or Jill Biden? <laughs> I'm not sure. Biden. <laughs> Biden says that. So uh, this is his uh, campaign chief says, oh, yeah, not dropping out. He's staying in the race. Mm. Anyhow, that has nothing to do with that's all just to keep as many donations coming in as possible, even though mm -hmm. most of them have stopped coming in. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, that's true. That's probably true. Now, after someone almost dies, as Trump said last night, uh, came within a quarter inch of dying, probably. By the way, we didn't talk about Trump's speech last night yet. Um. I thought the first half hour was good. I thought that was pretty good. Decent. I think he should have stuck with that and then given his little you know, I was, ending I was, also. But. I was thinking that until we started this show. Yeah? And I'm like, no. And don't give him any more. Screw these people. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Don't give him any more. I Like we have gone through the gauntlet of just reading story after story projection after projection and to think about the party that tries to promote the fact that they're the only ones protecting democracy and everyone else is destroying it which is just a bold-faced lie it's like um i don't know man i like i don't want to be the bigger person anymore <laughs> i just don't not in like stature because yeah. I'm already you were always you're almost always the bigger I'm person. Already that. Mm -hmm. I'm talking like I don't want I like I feel like rather than turning the other cheek, we should look at Jesus's example of flipping tables in the synagogue. Yeah, and that's what we should be doing. You know, they had like birds on top of it and stuff, and there were birds. We should be flipping tables. I gotcha. Everyone likes to use that one example of Jesus doing something. You know. At one time. Hmm. All right, here we go. I feel like it's relevant. Here's this news clip. <laughs> also, George, we have to point out. Remember, no this who... is like the night of, by the way. This is the night of. He almost died. All right. We got basically no information on this thing yet. But let's point out the fact that this was Trump's fault. <laughs> this, let's straight up victim blame, okay? The shooter, what the shooter's motives were, no matter who the shooter is, you are going to hear conspiracy theories going forward. No, no question about that. But as, as you, you point out those statements from J.D. Vance and Vivek Ramaswamy, of course, uh, President Trump and his supporters have, have contributed to this violent rhetoric as well. Well, absolutely, George. We were just looking back this morning at some of the things that uh, former President Trump has said. He warned last March of potential death and destruction if he were charged by the Manhattan District Attorney. Our country is being destroyed, as they tell us, to be peaceful. Uh, Trump in January warned of bedlam in the country if the criminal charges against him succeeded. And, of course, in March... He said, now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a blood. I like how she said it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. Uh, he was talking about the whole, the auto industry. It's going to be a bloodbath for the auto industry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was... <laughs> what they're basically saying yeah. is Trump invited his own assassination attempt uh -huh. because he was wearing a skirt. Yeah, it was what it he was, was wearing. It was the clothes. Mm -hmm. You know, if he, he would was just, asking for it, he was asking for it. If he mm -hmm. would just go out in public. And be decent, yeah. You know, <laughs> then there would be no violence against them. Let's see what else they. Am say. I right, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a hell yeah? 
country. That will be the oh, least of it. Hail. He said he was partly joking and that that was taken out of context. Uh, but those are indeed his words. And you <laughs> so she says he was uh, joking and that was taken out of context. But those were indeed his words. <laughs> it doesn't. She is factually accurate mm -hmm. in the fact that those words came out of his mouth. There were other words in between them and before them and after them. And also like everyone in politics has used those words also for a long time. But she's not lying when she says those were indeed his words. Mm -hmm. You have true. heard it from supporters as well. And supporters are certainly in some parts angry. And, and let's remember January 6th uh, in so many ways for the <laughs> campaign. Uh, January 6th will probably be in the background after. You I know this is triggering you right now. <laughs> so I know ridiculous. it has to be because you've dealt with, with this type of mentality yeah. in your, in your personal life before, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah a real thing that you've dealt with mm -hmm. and uh it's called darvo by the it, way <laughs> yeah that's what it's called they first of all you deny and then you don't accept any accountability and then you reverse victim offender mm -hmm. it's not donald trump is not the victim in this situation he's the offender okay look at jan 6 by the way so whenever anyone or any group of people take your response to something that is a, usually a correct response let me just give an example Let's say um, your spouse uh, lies to you and creates a whole scenario uh, that's completely opposite of the truth. And then not only that, but they took active steps to deceive you to make sure you didn't find out the truth. Mm -hmm. And then when you get suspicious of it and you ask them about the truth, they say that you're crazy and then they blame it on something else. And yeah. it's your fault. And then you figure out the whole scheme and you confront them with it. And uh, they finally tell you the truth. And then you're frustrated and upset about that, which is a normal reaction to that entire scenario that was set up by them. And then all of a sudden, you're now the offender because you're angry. You're angry. Yeah. You may have raised your voice you, during the conversation. You used a different yeah. tone when speaking to someone because you were upset about a, a, an entire scenario that they had set up and planned. Now, just so everyone knows, Charlie <laughs> is setting up an entirely, purely hypothetical situation right now. But you could apply that to what's going on with Trump and Trump supporters or people on the right or libertarians or anyone that when uh, these people do bad things and then you call them out on it. Uh, it makes you the bad person afterwards for being the one that called them out on it. And then even if someone, uh, you call them all these terrible things because they're calling you out on something. And then even if someone decides to take matters into their own hands, which we're not sure is what happened right here. In fact, it might not be the case what happened right here. But then it's still your fault because of the stuff that you were saying. Now yeah. you were saying the stuff in response to the stuff that they were doing. But because you said the stuff... They no longer feel safe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, now uh, Joy Reid and uh, the other uh, the other people up here. Um, is that is that Jen Psaki? I can't I can't tell. It's the hair color. Rachel Maddow is up there too. Um, they I'm gonna also, stay silent. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Stay silent for a little bit so I can bring my blood pressure back down. They also want to make sure that you do not see Trump as a victim in this scenario. That's the most dangerous thing that could happen right now is if people see Trump as a victim in this scenario. Universal um, kind of reaction that I'm getting, whether it's civilians or you know professionals, is really a deep concern um, and lack of confidence um, in not us at this table or us at MSNBC, but us as the media writ large. Hmm. And a fear that what's going to happen now is that the Republican Party will do what they do. They're in the middle of a campaign. They're, you know, the convention started today. But the media will acquiesce to trying to convince people that the things they've been experiencing for the last, you know, five, six years didn't happen. Hmm. Um, that the greatest purveyor um, and promoter of political violence really, you know, 
since anyone can remember, um, since George Wallace, I think, you know, that we just haven't experienced that kind of open, you know, sort of citing or sort of incitement of violence or sort of luxuriating in the idea of violence. It's just not something we're used to anymore in American politics. And well, do you like that Donald Trump is the, the biggest insider of political violence since, you know, George Wallace. Who was also guess, shot. So guess, yeah, that's, tr that's true. Well, you know, that's why they're making the comparison. Exactly why they're um, making the but you tell me which leftist well, or democratic leader has had their life attempted on in the last 30 years. Well, I saw, um, I saw the stack going around because I can't remember who it was. Maybe it was Donald Trump Jr. Uh, or a senator or someone that said that the left was the purveyor of political violence. And of course, there was a, there was a fact check put on it. Uh, There's an article about it, I think from AP or one of those sources. And of course, they brought forward this study showing that uh, the left has committed hardly any political violence uh, over the last certain number of years. And who um, studied it? The left? Well, it's just interesting because, you know, um, it turns out that none of the Black Lives Matter stuff was political violence. Oh. At all. That was just, that was just protest over someone dying. Mm. There was no political ideology behind that whatsoever. Yeah. So that's not the left committing any political violence. It wasn't an anymore. organized no, movement. No, 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 no. That's not in there. There mm -hmm. wasn't no. a website was or organization not, established. Was not motivated by any particular political ideology. So you just don't count at that. All. No, you it's just not in there. Yeah. Of course you can't. <laughs> it's pretty nice. Can't count it. Pretty nice. Okay. And we had to get used to that being a thing. Mm. And people are concerned and expressing concern that we won't be the guardians of memory. Hmm. And that we will allow hmm. Hmm. Donald Trump, as he is, you know, bathed in the glory and grandeur of his party, to rewrite himself as both a hero and a victim. That people who are the most vulnerable to not just the things he's done, but the things he's promising to do. And that that will then happen without a guardian saying, wait, right. stop. And then the media will acquiesce to this rewrite. And the people that I've been talking to don't accept the rewrite. Okay. So there we go. It's from Newsbusters. So. And, and so it's relevant in my little personal hypothetical true story. <laughs> in, the, in, in so far that, and the reason it's relevant is because Trump is the response. Mm. <clears throat> Trump in and of itself is the response to what the left has been doing for years. Trump is the reactionary abuse. Yes, <laughs> but they're calling <laughs> the reaction the abuse, not the initial abuse. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and you notice how their timeline only goes back so far, mm -hmm. right? They're forgetting the, the first thousand punches. And they're only talking about Trump's reactionary punch. And look, we have been very consistent on the show that we're no fans of Trump. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I don't want anybody to die. I don't want anybody to have their life attempted to be taken from them. It doesn't mean I am still like I'm a somehow now a fan of Trump and his policies. When it comes to advancing liberty, he's good on a few and extremely horrible on others. Even last night I was watching the speech and I'm like, God, he's just blaming Biden for all this inflation, even though he's the one that still to yeah. this day has signed the largest spending ever in American history, mm -hmm. which led to inflation. It just didn't happen while he was in office. Mm. <laughs> I'm doing my racial mad out there right now. Mm. So, but you also have to recognize, like, I think any sane person can look at the situation as a whole and, and at least understand why the right or the GOP for that matter is so like so supportive and behind Donald Trump. He's a big middle finger to the establishment. Even if it doesn't display in his actions, at least vocally, <laughs> you know, it, he's saying what everybody's been wanting to say. Fake news. Yeah. Right. When the media is lying to you constantly and finally someone stands up in front of a podium who's, who's was the most powerful person in the world for four years and like fake news. Oh, you're shocked. I called on you. You can't even ask a question. <laughs> like that's why people support him, mm -hmm. you know, and then 
she's trying to <laughs> this is so funny because when you think about it you're just like as she's saying it you're like oh yeah well but, but if you actually think about the whole situation she's trying to paint the picture that the media is somehow going to acquiesce to this victim narrative of Donald Trump but we are going to be the purveyors and the gatekeepers of memory <clears throat> don't you worry yeah we'll make sure you guys know Jan six. <laughs> <laughs> never forget. Because they never let you forget about all the terrible <sighs> things Joe Biden has done in his political career. You know, it's not like Biden gets up there and says something good and they're like, oh, but wait, what about the crime bill? Yeah, right. You know, they want to make sure that the media doesn't acquiesce. <laughs> right. God. No, that's not the case. That's it's not very happens. clearly one sided. Yeah. And everybody can see it. And everybody can see it, which is what all of their actions make. Trump more popular because everyone can see it. It doesn't yeah. matter what they say. Every most, not everyone, most people can see the shenanigans happening. I think people are a lot smarter. Well, sometimes I think people are a lot smarter than we give them credit for. Other times I think they're a lot dumber and we give them too much credit. Yeah. I think that's most of the time, but yeah. I think when it comes to these, I think when it comes to the straight up lies and the games that the media and let's say the deep state, whoever you want to think of them as, whenever they try to spin these certain narratives, I think a lot of people, they just have this gut feeling. It's like, well, what you're telling me is not the truth. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know what the answer is, but I don't believe you. Well, the truth is it's not working. You look at the polls, uh, as long as Biden stays in the race, it clearly looks like Trump is going to win. A lot of people quote the national polling averages, which Trump is still up by a little bit in most of those, but those aren't really the ones that matter. The fact of the matter is he's ahead in like all of the swing states by many points in a lot of them. And uh, by the way, those swing 14 points in Nevada now, those swing states, uh, I think it's, it's uh, around seven to nine, somewhere okay. right, something like that. It but was still. really high at one point. Um, <laughs> But you got to remember in the 2020 election, they had Biden up by way more than what Biden ended up winning by. And so they sort of over polled in favor of Biden then. Mm. What if they're over polling in favor of Biden right now? They it's didn't really bad. Well, they miscounted mm. the votes they were going to get. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> they got lost in the mail. Trump still, still he last still night talked it. about stolen election. He still I laughed it. so hard. I'm like, yeah, this guy's never going to give it up. And he's no. like, we're not going to let him do it this time. <laughs> not going to let him do it this time. He's still. All right. Let's get on to dumb bleep number three. Sorry. Charlie. I went on a rant there because that's just. Dumb bleep number three. This hits too close to home. All Anything political when we're talking about gaslighting or evil people or just despicable human beings that should be ashamed to exist in civilized <laughs> society hits very close to home for you. And I get that. Yeah, every and just, single story about someone lying, yeah, hits very close to home for you. When you I spent it. the the last year and a half like bringing yourself painfully back into like normal reality, yeah. When people try to spin other realities and then try to tell you that that's true, and then you start to feel crazy again, it's tough to go back. It's painful. But I, but it's I, painful, honestly. You know, let's bring this to politics for a second. These things are important when we talk about the gaslighting and all the lying that goes on at the national level and all that. Like These things are important. What is important is that people do not give in to things that they know are untrue. Okay, This goes on in personal lives, and that filters all the way up into our politics. It ends up being large swaths of people who will just give in to things that they know aren't true or will not look <coughs> into the truth or will not stand up for something. And so it's very important on a, on your own individual level level. And it goes all the way up to the mother freaking white house. Okay. Here, let's uh, move away from the media for a second and get to a normal everyday person. This looks like a normal everyday person right here. This is a regular everyday normal guy or girl, girl. Um, Okay, Tim Cass going around out there talking to people. This is posted by Libs of TikTok. There's still reactions to the assassination of Tim. This is a super reasonable uh, reaction here. Absolutely. You guys are out here on the heels of the attempted Trump assassination. Um, can I get your reaction to what happened the other day? 
Well, it's a shame the person missed, but um, it's ironic that the shooter was also a Republican, and I am scared about political violence. You're scared of political violence, but you was you were hoping that he wouldn't have missed. Yes. Wow. Could you elaborate on that? I mean, many people are thankful that the shooter missed and could have led to a lot of conflict in the country. Regardless if Trump is in power or not, he has a lot of influence, and that makes him a very dangerous person. And nothing will stop. And we want to live, and sometimes... Thomas Jefferson wrote a letter that included one of my favorite quotes that sometimes the tree of liberty needs to be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants do you hope to see others also if all that holds true do you want to see others try what this young man tried at the Trump rally I don't know if it would do any good okay interesting yeah I see you have a crossbow over here can you tell me a little bit more about him why you decided to bring it here um, so you have a, I don't know what it is. It looks like a crossbow. Yeah, it, it's a pistol crossbow. I don't like firearms. This is a much safer alternative, and it's <laughs> used only for personal defense as an absolute last resort. Wow. I hope I never have to use it. Did you feel, why did you feel compelled to bring it here? Do you feel unsafe? Very much so. I'm absolutely terrified to, to be here. I had one last question for you since it caught my eye. I see you have a hammer and sickle tattoo. Can you tell me more about this tattoo? I was born in the Soviet Union. Uh, I was brought here when I was a little kid, but it's just a symbolism of where I came from. Okay. God. <laughs> I like how it just keeps piling on right there. First off, I'm scared the person, I'm upset the person missed. And I'm scared of political violence. Those two things mm, yeah. go together. Like this is what she feels, though. Yeah, yeah. This is her so, truth, Nate. This you can't is, uh, question her truth. So upset about political violence. Also, I wish they would have hit him, and he would have died. Um, carrying a crossbow. And the reason for <laughs> that is because TJ wrote a letter. Yeah, that the blood of patriot and tyrants <laughs> needs to be spilled with the tree of liberty for the yeah. fruit. <laughs> and the roots of the tree and the dog. End of quote. For, for liberty. That was it specifically. For liberty. That's an old yeah. Russian proverb. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, good on her for knowing that quote, I guess, but bad on her for not knowing what it meant. You know, that's one thing as well. Um, that person who quoted that has a hammer and sickle tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> well, you skipped the crossbow, first of all. Oh, the crossbow, yeah. Imagine, she, <laughs> imagine she's in some sort of situation where she needs to use her crossbow and just be like, hang on, let me load yeah. it for it. Wait, <laughs> let me get this arrow cocked. <sighs> ah. And uh, maybe she's really good at it. I don't know. Yeah, it's a much safer alternative to a gun. And then uh, as somebody in the live group wrote, the Bolsheviks would have killed her first. Look, I... <laughs> I don't like to make fun of people's appearance. However, she doesn't look like she would have been a starving. Uh, <laughs> she looks like she would have been eating a lot of grain. Oh yeah. You know, back in the USSR um, and uh, by default would have probably been sent to a camp. <laughs> oh, she would have been <laughs> camp for sure. Yeah. Yeah. She's got her. Rainbow mask. I mean, mm -hmm. come on. That's she camp. doesn't really it goes to camp immediately. She's not really the exemplar of a of a proletariat no. there. Senator so. London Lamar says Charlie read something. All right. Uh she, I think, mm. says while I am praying for former President Trump and hope he makes a full recovery, the extremism from the MAGA regime has brought us to this moment. Okay. Of uh, course, that was a uh, that was a live. I know it kind of went along with some of the sentiment from the others, but just want to make sure we cover these. And then Troy, Troy? Bo mm -hmm. Bond, Troy Bond said, "Who pulled up to the Trump rally with the Glockamole? I'm not surprised, dog. If your base loves guns, someone's going to get shot at some point. The only thing that could have stopped this would be 50 good guys with more guns. Mm. Mm. And I'm pretty sure guys with guns stopped the other guy. Yeah, with they gun. did. They did stop yeah, it. So that did happen. Um, also." 
the only argument for guns I've seen during this thing has been that we need to ban AR-15s. Like that's been that's been the thing, you know. And of course, for this AR-15 to not be in the hands of that person, you'd have to go door to door and remove uh, however many hundred million of them that there are out there in the streets for that to be gone. Uh, so that as well. And then two, you'd have to forget about the fact that there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of rifles that exist out there that don't fall under the fake category of assault rifle uh, that you might have been able to get off a better shot at at Trump. And so it's not like you would have prevented this from happening if you just had someone like, oh, we should ban our AR-15s and uh, people can only carry a uh, 308. That'll stop some that'll stop someone from picking off a president. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's not going to happen. Not going to happen at all. All right. Um, Jess Piper. After the shooting, there was an interview with the with an ER doctor, and honestly, I was fairly horrified to realize that there are ER doctors who are also Trump supporters. Avoid ERs. Avoid the emergency room. You don't want to go there. You don't want to go there. Actually, you know what? When you look at the data, uh, there's a large uh, statistical body that will show you this. Like Most of the people who go to ERs uh, have some kind of injury. And so what I found from that data... As if it's unsafe to go to ERs. You just don't want to go there. So You don't want to run into a, an ER doctor who's a Trump no. supporter. Mm-mm. Would they render care to an undocumented person, a child who's been raped, a gay person, a trans person? Well, Jess, the answer is yes. They would. There's something called the Hippocratic Oath. Uh, mm. There's also uh, something Imtala. called Imtala. And uh, I've been... T- also, just basic human decency, where you wouldn't ask someone what yeah. their political affiliation is before you save their life, too. No. You know, if someone, if if a child's coming in who's been raped, yeah, they're not going to be like, listen, <laughs> uh, are you, did your mom vote for Biden? Well, what does that have to do with anything anyway? Are <laughs> are you saying that like Trump supporters are pro children being raped? Like, what does that mean? Like, I'm not taking care of that child. What does that mean? What does that even mean? I don't yeah. understand that question. Listen, uh, before I intubate you, I need to know, are you trans? Because <laughs> if you are, put in your own tube. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, dumb bleep number four. Holy crap. This is the only thing outside, really, of this uh, assassination slash RNC spectrum that we're going to be talking about. And that's Biden's call for a 5% cap on annual rent increases. That is a 5% cap rent control nationwide that Biden is calling for. And he, uh, listen, I'm not going to spend a bunch of times, a time, (laughs) not one time or multiple times, are we going to talk? Are we going to spend? We will not be spent. Yeah. Nay, (laughs) shall be spent on this topic other than the fact that rent control has been proven time and time again, to be an absolutely terrible policy. It leads to higher rent prices for one reason, because uh, one of the reasons is that people move towards more expensive housing because normally it's exempt from rent control prices. Uh, It also can decrease the quantity, decrease the quality, and... Stop development. A 5% cap, probably going to guarantee 5% every single year because what if one year you needed seven? But you can only do five. What if inflation, what if inflation one year was 9.1%? So what you're going to do is you're going to make sure you raise a five every year to make up for the other years where you can't raise it more than five, which is actually going to increase inflation because housing is a very large part of that. One of the biggest reasons is that it decreases the quantity of housing and the quality of the housing that uh, is in existence. It's an absolutely terrible policy idea. But... Biden kind of sold it to me. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> kind of sold it to me here. Uh, so this is him telling uh, the NAAC. Oh, the way he forgot to say P uh, when he talked about it earlier. Here's him telling them what the policy is. Now, this is his policy. He came up with it for sure. Uh, strongly and he's support. free to announce it. And this is a man that's going to serve through the year 2028. Okay. Here's his policy. The idea. The idea. That corporate-owned housing is able to raise your rent three, four hundred bucks a month or something. 
under what I'm about to announce, they can't raise it more than $55. <laughs> I don't know what happened with the teleprompter at that point, whatever it was. He kind of leaned in. God, he looks so confused himself. He just could not remember. I mean, you're mid-sentence. You're talking about this policy. Cannot remember it's the words you just said. Tough to remember. At all. Yeah. And the first thing you think of is, I know there's a five. There's a five for sure. Okay. Maybe so, there's two fives. So check mark in the column <laughs> for him. There's a five. We know that. Are there two fives? And is it a percent sign or is there a dollar sign before those? I'm not really sure. Fit, fit, fit. Uh, and then he said 50. Fit, and he was like, oh, fit, shoot. Five. Five. Dollars. Dollars. <laughs> $5. Oh, my God. Okay. In the same speech, by the way, this is a real quick clip. Seven seconds. Um, seven seconds in hell with Biden right here. Uh, the You know, you guys remember the summer of love. You guys remember 2020. A lot of us were there. A lot of us were there for that. Well, he's talking here, about. Here's the only thing is, is. So is the average rent $1,100? Because if that's the case, then 55 would be 5%. That could be it. That could be the case. That's, I don't know. That's the only thing I would... I try to give credit. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I think he absolutely misspoke. No, maybe you're right. But if the average rent is $1,100, right. then uh, you know 55 is all you'd be able to raise it. For, we'll have to look up the average rent. Yeah. Uh, he also said that uh, Trump wanted to sick the National Guard on people who were just protesting peacefully. Imagine this guy. Imagine how terrible of a guy Donald Trump is. You got people peacefully protesting. They got their signs. They're standing on the sidewalk, not blocking traffic, nothing like that. Peacefully protesting, holding up signs, stuff like that. We all remember what 2020 looked like. All right. We were all there. So here we go. And you peacefully protested George Floyd's murder. Donald Trump called for the National Guard to go after you. What the hell's the matter with this man? He didn't even say mostly peacefully protested. He just said peacefully protested. Completely peaceful. Yeah, it was a not yeah, complete, entirely peaceful protesting. Mm. Oh, I found then, out the national average of rent is fifteen thirty five a month. Okay, so five percent raise would be seventy six seventy five. He was off twenty one bucks. Okay, he was only off twenty one bucks. Was he off or was he lying? I don't know. Yeah, or just had no clue what he was talking about. He's old. Here's another great one. This one's just called Biden gas, by the way. And then we got to move on. This is great when he's talking the BET. Mm. So keep that in mind. That's an important point. He got a and so it's all about it's all about treating people with dignity, and it's about making sure that look, I mean, for example, look at the heat I'm getting because I I named a uh, the. Uh, Secretary of Defense, the black man. I named Katanji Brown. I mean, because of the people I've named. Okay, so he can't think of Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin's name. And so he says, I named the uh, Secretary of Defense the black guy. <laughs> he said, I named Katanji Brown. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the black guy. <laughs> you know, the guy, Secretary, the black one. You're black. <laughs> you know, you guys know each other, right? You guys are friends, I bet. You know him. You guys hung out oh in the streets God. with Kamala. <laughs> I know you did. Okay. Hey, I'm going to level with you guys. Getting old stinks. One day you wake up and you just don't feel like yourself. You got low energy. You're feeling cranky. Maybe even some problems in the bedroom. It turns out these symptoms are a result of lower testosterone. Now there's a solution. That's Nugenix Total Tea, made with powerful testosterone booster. Nugenix Total Tea ignites the fire inside to get you feeling like yourself again. And by the way, guys, I take Nugenix Total Tea every single day. I have since they sent us some to start doing these ads at the beginning of the year. And now, guess what? I'm a customer. Lower testosterone can cause a lot of issues in men, like low energy, decreased muscle, and problems in the bedroom. Nugenics Total Tea boosts your testosterone levels to maximize your strength, energy, and endurance to take your workouts to the next level and feel like you turn back the clock. So turn back the clock and feel like a younger you with Nugenics Total Tea Testosterone Booster with Tesnor. Get your complimentary sample now by texting GML to 231231 and try before you buy. There's no lines, no waiting rooms, no doctors. They're selling clinical-grade ingredients to you at a fraction of 
the cost. So don't be misled. Most products use generic ingredients that aren't close to clinical grade. But with Nugenics Total Tea, you get premium key ingredients at the same powerful clinical potency levels used in the trials. And if you're not totally satisfied, Nugenics will refund a 100% of your purchase price plus shipping and processing. So get a complimentary bottle of Nugenics Total Tea when you text GML to 231231. Text now and we'll add in a bottle of Nugenics Thermo X, our most powerful fat incinerator on the house. Just text GML to 231231. That's Nugenics Total Tea and Nugenics Thermo X on us. Just pay shipping and handling. Texting enrolls you into recurring automated text messages. Consent not required. The purchase message and data rates may apply. Okay. Uh, number five, I don't know. If we're just going to skip uh, this. Uh, the idea, the idea that they're talking about getting rid of Biden right now after they held a primary election. Democratic voters voted for the candidates that were allowed to be on their ballots. We know how that goes. Every election's like that. Mm -hmm. You know, they hold libertarians, all kinds of people off the ballots all the time. So they voted for him. They selected their candidate. And now that it looks like he might lose, they're like, oh, all those voters were wrong. Yeah. That whole democracy thing. Yeah. yeah. They were wrong. We don't need it. They don't know what they were doing. <laughs> the Democrat people are stupid. Yeah, but we here's can't the allow thing. them to choose our candidate. The reason they voted for him is because the media lied to them about his cognitive abilities. Yeah. Had the media been honest about Joe Biden's mental health decline since he won the presidency, I don't think many but, Democratic voters would have actually voted for him to. Do you really go think, to election? Do you really think? But all they these... all thought he was fine. Did they? Yes. Did they? Yes. And here's okay. why. Here's why. Because most people are siloed in their news. Mm. We learned this when we That's did true. the Human Project. Rehumanizing the Rehumanizing Re Project, Re which you can go, which you can go listen to. Project Nathers. That was two years ago. That was like four, probably four years. Four ago. Four years ago. It was a Nate, long time ago. Three or four years ago. Nate was doing the rehumanizing yeah. project. Amanda's first episode. That's where we met Amanda. And you learned how siloed people are in their media that they we did have someone on the left still think they still think that Charlottesville was a racist thing. And he said, "Fine, people on both sides." Yeah. And we're talking. He was well, talking it was about racist Nazis. things at Charlottesville. There were Nazis there. Yes, but they yeah. think they still think that Trump were calling was calling Nazis fine people that's true i and think it's biden been, still thought that and it's been it's been debunked over and over and over and over again and people still believe it they still believe people it. still think rittenhouse shot three black people yes some people were shocked to find out at the trial that the people were white this whole yeah. thing involved all white people all whiteies mm -hmm. <laughs> that's it um let's see so that whole idea uh i just we got to stress the point that this entire saving democracy narrative is, is it's just BS. These people don't care any more about democracy than Donald Trump cares about democracy. Maybe even less, possibly even less. They want to go with the people, of course, as long as the people are on their side. If they're not, then they're deplorables or they're fascist or whatever it is you know if more people vote for donald trump this year than joe biden well they're wrong i guess that means democracy sucks although we would have democratically gotten rid of democracy in america and i think that counts i think that's okay and so these people don't care about that and also as we've said several times they do not care that joe biden is no longer with us they do not care that he's got dementia. They only care about winning. No, they want to win. If they were still ahead in the polls and Joe Biden was on life support right now, <laughs> no one would be talking about taking him off the ballot. All they care about is winning the election because no one cares that Joe Biden's the president. They care about the administration that works for him. It's those people, those deep state, even the shallow state people, shallow and deep state, mm -hmm. mid state, you know, and then even the deep, deep state. That's the people that the deep state are worried about. Mm -hmm. They and don't care. Not even to mention the shadow state. I know. You know. You don't want them either. Mm -hmm. The no. deeper deep state people <laughs> watch behind their backs every once in a while <laughs> because of those guys. Okay? Don't get me started on them. <laughs> How far down can we go? <laughs> Eventually, you well, go deep Well, there's a deeper, deeper, deeper yeah. state. 
but yeah, that just comes out in China. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's let's go to uh, people can still vote for it. Yeah, let's you can still vote for number five. Uh, let's uh, yeah, vote. That's number five. Uh, let's see. Load up. Nope, that's not it. That was not a call to arms, by the way. I was trying to get a video to load up. <laughs> not people. Here's Joy Reid. What she's talking. What's she talking about? We still don't know for sure whether Donald Trump was hit by a bullet, whether he was hit by glass fragments, whether he was hit by shrapnel. We don't have those details. We actually have no details from his physician, even though this man is still a Secret Service protected, you know, and pres presidential candidate. We knew almost nothing. Why? Why don't we know that much? We know that three people were shot. One person, unfortunately, was killed at the rally. We don't know where they were sitting or standing relative to him. We don't know why... For nine full seconds, Donald Trump was allowed to stand back up during an active shooting, an active shooter situation, even though they at that point had said the shooter, the shooter was down. How would have they know? How would they, would they have known if there were more shooters or not? Nobody knew that there could have been five shooters for all they knew. Yet they allowed him to stand up in the middle of that you know, crisis and pose for a photo and fist pump the air so he could get the iconic photo. <laughs> and then they allowed him to stand up again outside of the SUV instead of just shoving him into the SUV. That seems really unusual. What is the actual injury to Donald Trump's ear that's under that bandage? Shouldn't we know that by now? It's weird. And there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of curiosity about it. <laughs> you know, in the sort of media world, you know, my profession. It's weird, right? Where are the FOIAs? What, why isn't the New York Times, like, aggressively pursuing his medical records? Because that's stupid. That's it. It doesn't matter, first off. They've already shown there's a, there is an angle where you can see, uh, you can see him getting shot in the ear. I uh, saw that going around. Um, also, whether or not he was hit by a bullet or uh, one of the claims was that it hit the uh, teleprompter and he got hit by glass. That's that's been kind of disproven already, but okay. She already admitted your point? three other people were shot and yeah. one person was killed. No, so not, I don't know, Joy. You do the math. Yeah. Let's no. But math is racist. That's, that's what I was gonna say. You gotta so, be careful there. We Sorry. can't we can't handle that kind of racist speak Oops. on here. Um the other thing is she's insinuating. Oh, they allowed him for nine seconds to stand up. And put his fist in the air and pose for that iconic photo. As if that was what was going That's through unusual. his mind. He was. That's unusual. Yeah. And she's insinuating that, that was planned. It was, yeah. She is. That's what yeah. she's doing. And she's saying people should be questioning this. Of course, she's not questioning how the mother F did the Secret Service allow a rooftop that was 136 yards away to not be covered by anyone. That's an interesting one. Don't worry. It's got its own dumb bleep. <laughs> okay, it's his own episode we're going to talk about here in a little bit. All right, so that's weird. So the conspiracy theory is what's going to be in number six. By the way, uh, Morning Consult poll came out yesterday. 34% of Democrats believe Trump staged the July 13th assassination attempt. Jesus Christ. Um, you got to pay to get further into the poll. I cannot tell you how many people were in this poll. So I can't normally like there was this big poll by uh, the Manhattan Institute that showed a lot of interesting things. We were going to talk about it on Wednesday. But the first thing I do with the poll is see how many people are in it. There are 100 people in the Manhattan Institute poll. That's not enough for me. Uh, I don't know how many people were in this poll, but this is going around Twitter a lot. 34% uh, of Democrats believe Trump staged the July 13 assass assassination attempt. And then we have one that we talked about on Monday, I think, when Charlie wasn't here that a top political advisor to uh, Reed Hoffman, who is a Democrat mega donor, set, sent an email saying that people need to consider that this whole thing was staged by Trump. Um, that's a really dumb idea. It's a super dumb idea. Mm -hmm. I, uh, we've explained it, both of us. I talked about it in detail on Monday. But having a theory that you were going to allow someone to shoot you within a quarter inch of losing your life as you were moving your head around. <laughs> oh, yeah. Pick the guy who uh, didn't make his shooting class in high school, too. I went that guy. Yeah, that's the one I won. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. It's well, that really was to make it more theory. believable. That's <laughs> true. It's a really <laughs> stupid theory. Make sure he's a Republican. Democrat might hit me on purpose. <laughs> on accident, I mean. Sorry. That's a good one. Okay, so that's the conspiracy theory. We'll skip ahead to um, some stuff from the RNC, the media response to J.D. Vance. Now, I'm no fan of J.D. Vance. Okay? I'm sure he's a, I'm sure he's a great guy. I'm sure he's great. Um, got a beard. Might be... It's been, been a while since anyone had a beard there in the, uh, in the White House. Lincoln? Been a bit. I don't know when the last beard was, but it's been too long. Okay. Mm. And I don't know when the last time someone uh, had eyeliner on in there either. <laughs> so we're going to cover, well, I guess Kamala maybe wears eyeliner. So that's fine. Uh, so anyway, let's see. JD Vance wanting to be buried at his family's plot in Kentucky as an example of white supremacy. So that's something that needs talked about right now. You know, in this week when people are talking about turning down the temperature, you wouldn't want to select something just as plain. <laughs> Innocuous says, uh, someone wanting to be buried where the rest of their family is buried as an example of white supremacy. But hey, let's do it anyway. Kentucky, so here's where that. his seven or six generations of his family are, are buried. And his hope is that his wife and he are eventually laid to rest there and their kids follow them. And I sort of understand the idea of sharing the, the burial plot, but it also is it reveals someone who believes that the history that the family should inherit and indeed the history that should be determinative in the in the story of the Vance family is the, the history of the Eastern Kentucky Vances and not the Vances from San Diego, which is where his wife is from and where her Indian parents are from. But in America, it doesn't always have to be the white male lineage that trumps the, the, that defines the family history, that that branch of the tree supersedes all else. And, and, I, and I just think the construction of, of this notion reveals a lot about someone who fundamentally believes in the supremacy of whiteness and masculinity. And it's couched in a sort of halcyon, you know, revisitation of his roots, but it is actually really revealing about what he thinks matters and who America is. And that America is, is a place for people with his Kentucky. Okay. Yep. Uh, so that's, that's bringing great. the temperature down. That's really good. Yeah. You don't want to select any of his policy ideas. Nothing like that. No stupid economic ideas. Nothing mm. like that. Like, oh, I heard he wants to be buried where his family's going to be buried, and his wife's okay with that. And His uh, wife's last name is Vance. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> true. Yeah, she's like, not the San Diego Vances or whatever. Like, them aren't Vances. I don't <laughs> think his wife's family changed their last name mm -hmm. to Vance. No. Uh, unless they happen to already it's have probably last name Patel. Of Vance. Probably. Statistically <laughs> true. Statistically, that is true. Yeah. And statistically, I don't know. Maybe he doesn't want to get cremated. I don't know. I don't know what the I don't know what the rules are around there. Well, but what she's saying, and this is what Amanda said, that's a relic of the patriarchy. Mm -hmm. You know, she changed her last name, which by the way, you don't have to do in America anymore. <laughs> she said, yeah. you know what's really terrible? The nuclear family. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! It's uh, it's really bad. Hey, I, I'm totally fine if people don't want to change their last. I told Lacey when we got married, I was like, hey, you can change your last name or not change your last name. It's fine. I was like, I wouldn't change my last name to yours. So why would I expect you to change your last name yeah. to mine? I don't care. I literally don't care. I wish we weren't having this conversation. They're getting married. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I should keep going there. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I told her, except for the last part, of course, I'm happily, happily married. Um, uh, but she didn't have to change her last name. Maybe that is a part of the patriarchy or whatever. I don't know. I don't think it's white supremacy though. <laughs> I really don't think it's white supremacy. Don't black people change their name too? I, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm <laughs> we're going to have to pull some black people, but I think also it is a common to change your last name. Yeah. You know? In some husband. cultures, it's yeah. common to change to the to the matriarchy, to mm -hmm. the female name. That's, and I don't know if that's Indian culture or not. Might be. You know what's not racist is looking at J.D. Vance's wife and saying that if Project 2025 is enacted, J.D. Vance's wife is going to be deported. That's not racist. <laughs> looking at someone who, uh, you know, is not white and being like, oh, there's an immigrant right there, probably going to get deported. You wouldn't want to leave out the, you wouldn't want to consider the fact that 
sometimes people who aren't white are also born in America. I'm so tired of this Project <laughs> 2025 BS, too. I know. Jesus. I know. God. It's, it's gone down a little bit, um, you know, since the assassination attempts. So I guess that's one good byproduct of that. But, um, yeah, it's going to... It's going to be pumped back up again here pretty soon. Uh, so anyway, yeah, his wife is an American citizen. That's the backstory on there. It's definitely not racist to assume that she's going to get deported uh, simply by looking at her and assuming that she's an immigrant. And we don't even know if he supports Project 2025. Oh, I'm sure he wrote it. I'm sure he wrote it in the back Look, room. The Heritage Foundation has been doing this since, what, the 80s, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I believe, or maybe late 70s. And then, of course, the, the left, they have their own, you know, agendas. That they present Do to they? their I leaders. Thought, I thought they're just on the defense from all of the Republican <laughs> onslaughts all the time. Yeah. I didn't think they had agendas. Oh, man. Uh, here's a 30... I like what the community note said, though. There's nothing in Project 2025 that purports to deport American citizens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's fantastic. Uh, 48 seconds here. Another thing you have to be worried about, you see, he named one of his companies after something from Lord of the Rings, which, as you know, is something that white supremacists do. Mm. Okay. Now, if this is what they can find on this guy, then I think we're doing okay. Uh, but here's that. Um, like Mr. Teal, who has named his companies after things in the Lord of the Rings series of J.R.R. Tolkien books. Uh, Lord of the Rings is a sort of favorite um, cosmos for naming things and cultural references for a lot of far right and alt right figures, both in Europe and the United States. Peter Teal names all these things after Tolkien figures and places like his company Palantir, for example, um, like his mentor, like Peter Teal, who had given him all his jobs in the world. Mr. Vance also when he founded his own venture capital firm with help from Peter Thiel, named it after a Lord of the Rings thing. He called it Narya, N-A-R-Y-A, which you can remember because it's Aryan, but you move the end to the front. Uh, apparently that word has something to do with elves and rings from the Lord of the Rings series. Not only is it alt-right extremists. They have nothing else to talk yeah, about. This is what they got. This is the Jesus problem. This Christ. Is the, so I don't know if you caught the last part there, but not only is just the Lord of the Rings things white supremacists also. But she also took the Naria and said, you can remember that because it's Aryan, but you take the end and move it to the beginning. <laughs> These are the people that are fighting disinformation, <laughs> misinformation, and trying so hard to turn the temperature down, but the Republicans just won't let them. They just will not let them. It's just not God, possible. She has such a punchable face. Oh, yeah. One of the Good more punchable faces. Lord the most punch you see that political violence oh, you see that charlie that's uh, the her neck here. is longer than mine and i've got a long that, neck that's the problem that is a giraffe neck if i've ever seen one number seven was dumb things that people are saying about jd vance number eight is a dumb thing that jd vance said see that's what it means to be objective we're missing objectivity here okay don't you try to pick a horse in this race one of them's gonna let you down so we're not gonna pick a horse uh, we're going to make fun of all the horses. All right. Here's J.D. Vance blaming the housing crisis uh, on greedy Wall Street bankers, which a lot of people think this way. You know, Bernie Sanders, AOC, um, a bunch of people on the left. <laughs> Elizabeth uh, Warren. Yeah, Elizabeth Warren <laughs> also. Uh, probably Joe Biden could say the same thing. A lot of people feel this way, so it's not an extreme outsider opinion. Um, well, let's just hear what he said, and then we'll talk We'll say things that all the libertarians listening to the show already know, uh, but we'll, we'll do that right quick. Months ago, I heard some young family member observe that their parents' generation, the baby boomers, could afford to buy a home when they first entered the workforce. But I don't know this person observed if I'll ever be able to afford a home. The absurd cost of housing is the result of so many failures, and it reveals so much about what's broken in Washington. I can tell you exactly how it happened. Wall Street barons crashed the economy and American builders went out of business. As tradesmen scrambled for jobs, houses stopped being built. The lack of good jobs, of course, led to stagnant wages. And then the Democrats flooded this country with millions of illegal aliens. So you just throw that in there and everybody's behind you now. Uh, yeah. So the Wall Street bankers, it's not like they deserve no blame. They did 
operate greedily. They did during that time. Put together absolutely horrible yeah. mortgages and sold them as, as yeah. securities. So that they knew that they knew were not rated as prime. <laughs> they knew it. They knew it. But now the- why would they do such a thing? Why would they take such a risk? Because in, <laughs> in packaging subprime and prime mortgages together, actually mostly subprime with a few primes stuck in there. Mm-hmm. Why would they package those up and then trade those securities? Why would they do such a thing? Because they knew it. Why was, would they take on that risk? Because it wasn't a risk. <laughs> That's the answer. Why? That, because they no, I make, know that. Because they were able to make risk-free money the whole time. Because the government was going to back them up, and they knew that the government did back them up. Yeah. But if they weren't going to, not well. First off, the government had to back them up because they were legally obligated to give people loans. <laughs> a lot of those loans, yeah, uh, under you know penalty of fines and what, whatever else it was. Uh, not all of them, but definitely set up that structure of getting out those loans. And then, of course, uh, they're going to back them up if some bad goes wrong. If the government wasn't going to bail them out, wasn't going to help them out, wasn't going to back those loans, maybe they would have been less greedy. Maybe the housing market crisis wouldn't have happened in the first place. You know, maybe those prices wouldn't have run up. That whole thing, maybe the whole housing crisis wouldn't have happened if they weren't going to back those loans, if they weren't going to bail them out if something bad happened. And so you can say, but sure, okay. Charlie, even if I give you legal immunity for doing something and I say I'm going to pay your court fees and I'm going to back you up, doesn't mean you're just going to go out and do a bad thing because <laughs> I said I'm going to back you up, right? I mean, it's still on the, you know, still people who did it. The problem is people operate in under the incentive structure that they're placed in, especially businesses, corporations, and they are the ones who had that incentive laid on top of them. First off, there could be penalties for not giving out a certain amount of these loans. You might be called racist. Could be penalized in any number of ways. And also, don't worry about it. We're going to back you up. That's fine. And you got people behind us backing them up too. Yeah. That's totally fine. And no one in America is going to default on their mortgage. It's the safest bet. Well, they thought the prices would uh, continue rising. They have to continue rising. If they start coming down, everyone's screwed. (laughs) And so, yeah, the fact that he just can come out there and blame Wall Street for the housing crisis and not the government is scary to me because he's gone from this guy who wrote Hillbilly Elegy, which is like a bootstraps kind of movie, you know, terrible life situation. Also, the government makes it worse and sets up the situation that perpetuates the cycle of poverty. Um, to a guy who... Although there are some not-so-great parts in the book. I haven't read it, but I have seen some excerpts. Yeah. Um, to now, it was Wall Street's fault. I've seen him on the picket lines. This is my legal obligation in the state that I hate unions. I have to say it every single show. He's a big um, union guy. He's a union guy. He's probably the one that got the Teamsters there. That's possible. That mm-hmm. could have been a condition, actually, Yeah, being J.D. Vance. That's possible, for sure. Um, yeah, I didn't know what salting was. I hate him even more now. Whatever it was, any action they take, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't even matter. Salting, peppering, any of it. Don't like it. Yeah. Not a fan. Cayenneing. <clears throat> uh, there'll be, a, I mean, we'll talk about it later, man. I'm doing a show right now. <laughs> they will be up soon. I promise. I still got like four shows, five, four or five shows of the man that they put out there. Okay, so we got we got a couple big things we have to move on to because we're obviously running long. I'm about to pee my pants. All kinds of stuff going on right now. Uh, so let's see what else is. Let's next. just end the show. No. Oh, okay. Can't end the show. We could just say, do you guys remember everything we said about Destiny over the last couple of days? Vote for that guy. <laughs> Don't believe number nine is Destiny. So we won't go into all of the details. The general idea is that guy was a Trump supporter, so screw him. I don't care that he died. And let's make fun of them. Uh, also, I'm not going to condemn someone for trying to kill Hitler. Yeah. I, mean, I guess he's ideologically consistent, unlike a lot of other Democrats that are out there. They're ones condemning someone trying to kill Hitler. Um, but yeah, really terrible stuff coming out of Destiny. He did get banned, temporarily suspended from uh, Kick, the streaming site, until the end of the month. 
which I'm not, I'm not calling for at all, unless they have speech rules on their platform. Mm -hmm. You know, that's their platform. They can do whatever they want. If they want to require him to get a COVID vaccination, they can do that. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> like, look, if you want to post on our platform, <clears throat> yeah, got to be vaccinated. So, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Destiny is number nine. You guys remember all that. We're not going to go into it because we're running long right now. If uh, you want to hear about it, just go to Wednesday's episode. We talked about it on Wednesday. In length. For sure. The next thing we shall not. Oh, wait, that's Destiny. We shall. We shall not skip. That's the fact that Biden has COVID. It's one of the reasons you might have to drop out because we know COVID, super dangerous. Kills old people. Yeah. By the way, he's not wearing a mask around all these people that he's walking around. <laughs> you know, I thought that was super important. Mm. But the people, a lot of content from uh, a lot of content from the news today. People like Jen Psaki, a lot of MSNBC folks. They were really on one this week. This is a tough coping week for them. You know, very difficult. Mm hmm. All right, here we go. Here's the question that I have on that. These two men are both elderly. Donald Trump is an elderly man who, for whatever reason, was given nine seconds to take a iconic photo op during an active shooter uh, situation. Weird situation. We'll figure that out one day. Pause um, it real quick. His okay. survival of that. By, and By the way, bouncing hold on. You have to remember, Trump is not a little dude. The dude he's six three, probably. I would say more like 275, 280. The dude's like 6'3". He's a big dude. He's a big guy. And you can see it in the video where he kind of like strong arms the, so like the Secret Service to like raise his fist up. Mm -hmm. They were trying to keep him from doing anything like that. They were. And he said, wait, wait. He's the commander in chief. Also at that time, they said the shooter was down. But when he says wait and he's refusing the move... But she's still like now this is MSNBC once again spreading the conspiracy theory that this was somehow staged mm -hmm. by the Trump campaign. Soft spreading maybe of a ridiculous conspiracy theory. I think as Trump was getting up, he saw the photographer run mm -hmm. from stage right yeah. to stage left. And because he saw that, because he's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. Mm -hmm. He can see everything. He's everywhere at once. He knew that if he were to strong arm the Secret Service and raise his fist in the air and yell fight, that someone would get an iconic photograph. Yeah, which is why he was so concerned about getting he, his shoes on. You know That he could use that for his campaign. That yeah. makes total sense. That was the whole idea. Yeah, total sense. He followed... I, Get why they're saying it now. Executed perfectly the plan. <laughs> All right. It gets more ridiculous because they're still just in conspiracy territory now. Situation. Weird situation. We'll figure that out one day. Um, but his survival of that and, th and bouncing right back and going right to his convention is being conveyed in the media world as a sign of strength. This uh, uh, pr current president of the United States is 81 years old and has COVID. Should he be fine in a couple of days? Doesn't that convey exactly the same thing? That he's strong enough, older than Trump, to have gotten something that used to really be fatal to people his age. So if he does fine out of it and comes back and is able to do rallies, isn't that exactly the same? It, it I should. mean, it's not exactly the same. It's not the mm. same incident, but it's, all, it's an mm. elderly man it, coming through out of an illness. It should. Getting COVID is the same thing as being shot. Dude, they are so just, they're just, they're beat right now and they know it. <laughs> it so, a bunch of these clips today have been from MSNBC. I didn't so realize that. so bad. This is like, so bad. They are reaching and stretching harder than I've ever seen. The only person who reaches and stretches better than this is Joe Biden. I've seen it, in, you know, <laughs> behind the scenes. He yeah. doesn't do it in front of everyone. But uh, I heard, you know, when he goes on his runs, rides mm -hmm. his bike, gets all limbered up and all that. They are stretching so hard right now. And it's because they're beat that they're, I mean, they got, they got Lord of the Rings names being white supremacists. Okay. They got the conspiracy theory. Uh, they got that. What else did they have earlier? They had uh, being buried in your family plot. Yeah. That's part of white supremacy. Mm -hmm. Probably in the patriarchy too. Yep. Um, they're for democracy, but yet they're going to probably make Joe Biden step down. They had don't let Trump be a victim in this scenario. <laughs> yeah. 
earlier on. And then getting and shot. We, well, I didn't have the clip in here. I don't know what happened to it, but um, they had one earlier where like they were worried about themselves. They're scared for journalists and scared for themselves in this moment in history, you know, mm -hmm. like right after the assassination attempt. That was really good. One. Like, don't forget about me. Mm -hmm. I know that's crazy, but what about me? And now someone got sick after six shots, by the way. Can someone mention that on the left? Like, yeah, he's had six shots so far. He's still got COVID. <laughs> okay. Where's Rachel Maddow on this panel? I know. <laughs> she had to duck out for this one for sure. <laughs> and he still gets it. He's 81. And that's just like surviving a quarter inch of death from a bullet. Same, same. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, the last thing we have to talk about is the Secret Service and Slope Gate. Secret Service Slope Gate for Dumb Leap number 11 now. Uh, as you guys know, uh, well, we'll play the video. When you saw the events unfold on Saturday. Shock uh, and then concern, obviously, uh, for the former president. Investigators now trying to determine whether roof access had been properly locked down. The shooter climbing up seemingly unimpeded, about 400 feet from the stage, with a direct line of sight on the former president. Should that roof have been secure, period? That building in particular has a, a sloped roof uh, at its highest point. Um, and so, you know, there's a safety factor that would be con considered there that we wouldn't want to put somebody up on a sloped roof. Uh, and so, you know, the decision was made to secure the building uh, from inside. Not only did she think that, she said it. She said it out loud. Out loud mm -hmm. in an interview. She Don't you think you would run that by somebody and be like, you know, if I say it's a safety issue for sloped roof, no one's going to notice the other sloped roof, right? She, and the team was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just talk about the safety of the sloped roof. Everybody, yeah. yeah, they'll accept it. Her team was probably eight other people who have never done anything uh, to protect anyone in their <sighs> lives also, you know. Um, this is, uh, she needs to be fired, first off. Uh, this whole thing needs to be investigated, 100%. 100% has to be investigated because uh, there's some lapses in the coverage that happened here. And um, I'll just put up a picture of <laughs> the bravest Secret Service agent I've ever seen in my entire life. God rest his soul. Apparently he couldn't be there. But the like, they, they started, they started uh, he sends his best from the grave. Because he fell off that I put roof. a picture of the bravest. <laughs> <laughs> this guy said safety. Yeah. I got a job to do. You all right. I'm putting it. my life at risk. See that little glimmer right there? <laughs> That's the Medal of Honor hanging off of his chest. <laughs> for, for getting up there on that roof. <laughs> brave guy. This, this guy's super brave. <laughs> They started off by, did you uh, see I didn't have an 11, by the way? I had to two ones two together. Two number ones. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. They started off by blaming the local police and saying, well, that was the purview to local police, <laughs> which is ridiculous. Why don't you, why hire any Secret Service agents? Why not just put the whole thing under the purview of <laughs> local police officers? Yeah. Like, you're going to leave that building, mm -hmm. you know? I tried to... Who knows sloped roofs better than the local police <laughs> yeah. department? Well, you see, they've got experienced officers who have uh, made it across that roof in previous previous things that happened, you mm -hmm. know? And so they wanted to bring in the experience on that. Um, some guys that uh, own the roofing company also, also moonlighting as police officers, daylighting as police officers. Uh, so they want to bring them in as well. But they, they failed in their duties. And once the local police, or I believe it was the mayor, came out and was like, yeah, that's not it. They asked us to take care of traffic. Like, that's <laughs> what they had us do. They came and met with us a month beforehand. Told us everything they wanted us to do. This wasn't one of the things. <laughs> that's not one of the things that they told us to do. <sighs> okay? And then they go to the... It's the sloped roof. Of course, it's the... Why can't they just... Listen, either they failed miserably... Or this was on purpose. Those are the things. Those are two options right here. And the more they lie about their failure, the more it Option looks like B. it was on purpose. Mm -hmm. So someone 
quickly better come out and say, I totally dropped the ball. I'm an idiot. That's my bad. I'm, I'm resigning. I'm resigning. Or this was on purpose. Because the people I'm protecting deserve better than my oversight. Yeah. Whatever it is. My yeah. God. Okay. Those are the dumb beliefs. Now, of course, what I also find interesting, you know, we just went over all the conspiracy theories that this was faked by mm -hmm. the left. But if we mention that it could have been an inside job, well, that's a that's, conspiracy theory that's, that's so far-fetched. That's a conspiracy theory. It's so... How could you not trust our institutions after what our institutions did for us during COVID? How could you not trust them? <laughs> trust the yeah. experts here. Yeah, trust trust all of them. The intelligence community, they kept us safe after 9-11. Yeah. They never spied on Trump's campaign. No. Trust yeah. all of them. They told you about the laptop up front. You know? <laughs> exactly what it wasn't. So, uh, all right. Let's get through the dumb bleeps. Uh, that was a long show. Thank you for everyone uh, hanging out. Everyone who's still hanging out with us right now. I think the government should be number 12, <laughs> probably. Well, that, that seems unfair. Well, actually, it kind of is. Uh, number one, number one was the uh, initial media reactions, like loud noises. Number two was the that night and other media reactions. Number three is the uh, people afraid of political violence, but also they wish Trump would have been killed in an act of political violence. Number four, some of those Joe Biden gas slash the five percent rent control measure, and also calling Lloyd Austin that black guy, that black man. Uh, number five. The Demi Democratic event of Biden uh, leaving because he might not win, uh, even after all the voters chose him as the candidate, that kind of thing. Number six, that the idea, the idea that Trump would stage this shooting. Uh, number seven, the media on J.D. Vance. Number eight, Vance saying that Wall Street caused the housing crisis. Number nine, destiny. Number 10, Biden, COVID, Trump. Shot in the face. Same, same. Same brave. Same, same. Same brave. Uh, same no cognitive ability. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Number 11, the slopes. Hitting the slopes. With, that's with two S's at the end of slope. Just so you know. Slope SS. <laughs> okay. Slope S. Secret Service. That's what that stands for. All right. Get your votes in. Get your votes in for those things. And also make sure... You get your votes in for the uh, the uh, the debate, the resolution, the affirmative or negative, mm. uh, the debate between the man and I. It's important. This is before you've heard the debate. That's the point. So make sure you get those votes in as well so we can see how much I win. I see what's happening here in this picture. This iconic photo mm -hmm. is this brave Secret Service agent defied orders. Mm-hmm. To be able to take the most iconic Secret Service agent photo. It was staged. It was staged. The whole thing was staged. It was wow. staged. Now that you guy... notice you notice the roof and how sloped it is, and he's looking through his binoculars, but the American flag up there and the mm. he saw the photographer and knew that if he mm. went on the most dangerous roof anyone has ever seen. Yeah. And defied safety protocol that's tougher than climbing mount everest if i've ever seen then it. he could have the most iconic secret service agent photo in history whole thing was staged this guy he's been walking around showing girls pictures of this photo for years now hadn't paid for a drink in the last several years either hmm. and the whole thing was fake yeah man been crashing weddings but that's dan bongino up there actually in that photo <laughs> get uh, your votes in Get your votes in, everyone. Uh, let's see. We're going to give you a few more minutes while Charlie uh, tells you what you should do while we're finishing up the votes. All right. Um, Y'all go share the show. I think that's all I got. All right. It looks like Destiny is the <laughs> winner, which is funny because that's the one that we didn't talk about. But the live group heard it all. The live group has heard it a couple times I'm going to go week. with the sloped roof. The slope to me was, uh, was yeah. the dumbest thing, but um, that's uh, it's Destiny. Yeah. That's our destiny, Charlie. <laughs> All right. Y'all share the show with a friend, a family member, or foe. Leave us a rating or review on Apple Podcast or Spotify. Visit all the links in the show notes and support the sponsors that support this show. 
Go to GodHatesFeds.com or JoinGML.com to be part of the Fed Haters Club. Uh, and if you don't hate the feds, then you're not black. <laughs> what? That's fairly accurate, honestly. I can get behind that one. <laughs> That's fine. I mean, honestly, what do you think? The st- <laughs> what do you think the stats are on that? Yeah, it's got to be true. It's it's funny because it's true. That's why I said it. Yeah, you would never tell. Do all those things or don't? I don't really care, but Nate does. And if you do or don't, we'll be back again on Monday. Hope you have a good day and a good weekend. And a good morning, Liberty.